Okay, so in the last video we talked about this z-score and we introduced the formula for it. Let's now see some examples where we're actually computing z-scores. And again, what z-score is, is a measure of where something is in terms of the standard deviation. Okay, so let's consider a set of data where our mean is 68 and our standard deviation is 6. Let's say here we want to compute the z-score for each data value. Compute the z-score for each data value. So let's consider our first one here, a data value of 82. So what we would do is take our z-score, we would take our data value, 82, subtract off our mean, 68, and then simply divide by our standard deviation. So that would come out to be 14 divided by 6. And usually we want a decimal answer for these. So that would come out to be 2.3 repeating. So we might end up saying uh, that it's about 2.33 if we round off. Okay, so 2.33 for that example there. Okay. And because that's positive, and we can see, of course, 82 is above 68, right? That's 2.33, two and a third standard deviations above the mean. Two and a third standard deviations above the mean. Okay, let's consider the data value 50 here. Same process, z-score. It's just your data value minus your mean. Divided by the standard deviation. In this case, we get negative 18 divided by 6, and our z score is negative 3. So this tells us we're three standard deviations below the mean. Right. Three sixes below the mean. Of course, three times six is 18. So we're below the mean. Okay. And now we turn and look at things the other way. So since the z-score tells us how many standard deviations were either above or below the mean, we can actually use the z-score to figure out a particular number. So now we're going to talk about going it the other way, and that is finding a data value from its z-score. Finding a data value from its z-score. So let's say that we have uh, a mean of 60 and a standard deviation of three and a half. So let's say we know first off that we have a z-score of two. Okay. Then that means we are two standard deviations above because it's positive two standard deviations above the mean. So we are two three and a half dollar bills, if you want to think in terms of money, above 60. Okay. And then we just do that computation. Two times three and a half is seven. Seven plus 60 would give us 67. Okay. On the other hand, what if our z-score was negative? Like z equals negative 
Well, that tells us we're two and a half below. So I just take the negative sign along with it, negative two and a half, standard deviations. And the negative is already going to take care of everything below the mean, plus 60. And then again, that just becomes a quick little uh, computation. Negative 2.5 times 3.5 plus 60. And we get that it's 51.25. And again, that's something you could just very quickly do on a calculator. Negative 2.5 times 3.5 plus 60. There you are, 51.25. So now we found our uh, data value by knowing our standard deviation. So we can actually go uh, either way. We can actually go either way. Let's consider uh, another example here. Let's say that we have a mean of 150 with a standard deviation of 15. So in our first problem here, let's say that we know our data value is 140 and we want to find our z-score. We want to find our z-score. So, z-score tells us where the data value is relative to the mean. So, remember the formula is simply data value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Okay. Oops, 15, sorry. So, we work that out. 140 minus 150 would be negative 10 divided by 15. We get a negative 0.67. So our z-score is a negative 0.67. So 0.67 z-scores are standard deviations below the mean. We can instead be asked the other way, given a z-score say a z-score of 1.5, we could be asked to find the data value. So now we're going the other way. We'll find x, so not find z. We already have z, so we want to find x. So we again take our z-score, 1.5, multiply it times our standard deviation, and that gets added on to the mean. And again, if it was negative, the negative sign would take care of it being below. So we just do the multiplication there. 1.5 times 15 plus 150. And when we do, we get 172.5, our data value. So this position stuff uh, gives us a way of telling us where something is. And it can let us compare two different values. It can let us compare two different values in the same data set. It can also give us a way to compare things that are in two different sets of data. Yeah. For example, um, And we had uh, an individual called Antonio took a test, uh, and on his test, he scored a 35. Now, the test he took had an average score of 25 and a standard deviation of 8. And Antonio's uh, friend Cinder 
uh, scored a 146 on their test. So you think, oh wow, Cinder did much better. But the average score on Cinder's test was 125 with a standard deviation of 18. And so both did better than average. We can see that. Antonio did 10 better than his average, and Cinder did 21 better than their average. But even that, the amount better, still doesn't really put things into perspective. We have to think in terms of the standard deviation. Who did better relative to their class? Relative to their class. Well, what we can do is look at that difference. He's 35, 10 above the mean, with a standard deviation of 8. Uh, and Cinder is 21 above the mean with a standard deviation of 18. In other words, if we want to compare them where they ranked in their classes, it's so, okay, relative to his class, Antonio did better, or the other way around, we need to look at their Z scores. And so we compute ZA for Antonio. We take his data value, 35, minus the mean, 25, divided by 8. And that comes out to be 1.25. 1.25. So his Z score is 1.25. He's 1.25 standard deviations above the mean. And now Cinder scored 146 minus 125 divided by 18. And that comes out to be 1.17. So it turns out relative to their set of data, uh, Antonio did better than Cinder. And so that's how we can compare where they're at in two completely different sets of data. Uh, two completely different sets of data. And so that's one thing that we can do with our z-score. Now what we're going to see in the next uh, section is how to take these z-scores and compute them into what are called percentiles. Uh, that's where we're going to be coming up into the next section. But uh, that will be later.